The Lord be with you, and welcome to Church Online at Westside. We are so glad that you have joined us today. We are glad for the Holy Spirit, which calls and gathers us in so that we can be the body of Christ. And so know that you are not alone today, but that you worship with others. Worship with others online, worship with others as they gather in person here at Westside. Um, But you are a part of a body of Christ, a community of faith, and we are glad for that and the way that God connects us together. This is a place where you matter and that you are among others who think that you matter as well for we are all part of Jesus Christ. We are online in multiple places. We are on Facebook and YouTube and at wslc.info. So if you struggle with the platform on which you are watching now, know that you can find us on other platforms as well. You can also find a digital bulletin at wslc.info and other links for you to use to engage in our time together. We are in a new season at Westside, and we are excited about it. It's summer, and there is a freedom in summer, and we are also mindful that in Christ we are free as well. And so we are remembering that, we are emphasizing that, we are celebrating our freedom in Christ together, knowing that however we gather and wherever we are, God meets us with that freedom um, no matter what. We are also excited today to welcome Pastor Jonathan Behar as a partner in the gospel with us. He is from Peace Lutheran, which is a mission partner to us. And so we welcome him and he will bring a message to us later in the service. We are also excited to welcome Katie Pauly as the pastoral intern. We've been telling you about her. We've been excited to welcome her. And today we actually do it. So look forward to doing those things later in the service. But we are gathered to worship, and so we do worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and we are called into worship through song. We sing. Gather us in. Gather us in. God. God's desire for you is that you would live free, free from the burden of your sin, and that freedom comes only in the mercy of Jesus Christ. And so trusting in this mercy, we freely confess our sins, not hiding them, but simply laying them bare, knowing that this is the work of God in our life, that we may be covered in the mercy of Christ. And so we do confess our sins. We do so together with the words that you see on the screen. Merciful God, we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We do what we don't want to do, and we don't do what we want to do. 
We have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and free us to live in faith and delight in your gifts. Amen. People of God, hear the good news that is for you. In God's mercy, Jesus Christ was given to die and be raised so that you may have new life and be free from your sin. And so you are with these words. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. They are left behind. They do not define you. They do not carry you. But it is Christ's mercy who covers you fully. So hear it again. You are forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and thanks be to God. We praise God for this good gift. Glory in the highest, glory be to God, glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Sing after me, shaper of the universe, shaper of the universe, thanks and praise we sing, thanks and praise we sing, loving Father, caring Mother, loving Father, caring Mother, hold us in your your table all are welcome here it says we pray God, the three in one, such a mystery. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your spirit which calls and gathers us in. May it open our ears that we may hear the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. If you are a kid, gather around. It is kid talk time. Make sure you can see. Get a front row seat. Um, This is time for you. And good morning, by the way. Um, Today, we are doing something exciting. We are welcoming Katie Pauly to our church, and she's going to be with us for a year, so it's really exciting, and this is her first Sunday. Sometimes when we do something for the first time, it can be kind of scary, right? Like when you walk into a room and meet new people for the first time, or maybe it's the first time you're going to play kickball, and you go up and to kick the ball, and that's scary, or you're playing some other game, I don't know, but lots of things can be scary when we do it for the first time, right? So today might be a little scary for Katie. What do you think we could do to make her feel more welcome and not so scared? There's probably some things we can do, right? Well, we could introduce her to everybody so that everybody knows her name, right? And then you, when you see her in person someday, could introduce yourself to her, or you can send a little message to her maybe. Those would be nice things to do. Another thing we could do is share nice words like, good to see you, or welcome. We could send her a note or a card. There's lots of things we can do to make people feel welcome, and especially Katie, right? Because you know what? Jesus tells us that when we belong to Jesus, which is what we all know that we are in the church, we are family to each other. And so it's just normal and natural for us to welcome each other. And we can know that none of us are alone. 
and that we are all welcome in the body of Christ. We are all connected to each other. And so we get to tell Katie as we welcome her here that she's a child of God, just like you are a child of God. So that's good news for all of us. Let's pray for her and for you. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you welcome us into the body of Christ. Today we pray for Katie and we pray for all of us, that we are your children and that you bless us so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We prepare to hear our Bible reading today by singing our scripture song. reading comes from the gospel of Mark, the third chapter. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Bebezabal. And by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people, I will be forgiven for the sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an internal sin. For they have said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him. And they said, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my brothers and my mother? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The gospel of our Lord. Well, first off, I want to say thank you for the chance to be here together. Uh, We at Peace Lutheran have followed the story of West Side since its beginning, having uh, been a part of of, uh, supporting this this congregation since since you first started. And it was with great prayer and, and admiration that we give thanks for the ways that we are joined together in ministry in Sioux Falls. But I have another question I want to start with today. What's the wildest thing that you have ever done? That thing that when your family and your friends heard about it, they maybe thought it was time for an intervention, maybe have you locked away for your own good. All right, go ahead and think about this for a minute. Now, tell a neighbor. Okay, maybe not. Some of you maybe were ready to share the wildest thing came up to mind right away for you. Maybe some of you were afraid of naming that wildest thing in the earshot of kids, so you don't want to put any ideas in their heads. But since I asked the question for you, here's the wildest thing I remember ever doing. When I was in high school, I wore a kilt from Edinburgh 
the London, the LA, the Albuquerque. Now I got lots of odd looks, but being of Scottish descent, my mother was so proud, yet my brothers and sisters walked a good 10 feet behind me the entire way. They were a little less thrilled of my wardrobe. Now for another question. What's the wildest thing you think Jesus ever did? Now maybe it's harder to point to just one thing, because since the day that he was baptized, things have been a little strange. He talks differently than others around him. He acts a little countercultural to those expectations. And because of it, people have started to talk. And they've started to follow him around. They have come to watch as he heals the sick, casts out demons, eat with meals with all the wrong kinds of people. And while some of this seems like a good thing for some, others think Jesus has taken it too far because he heals on the Sabbath, a holy day of rest. Even worse, Jesus is proclaiming the forgiveness of sins, and that certainly goes way beyond what they think Jesus can do. And all of Jesus' wild behavior comes as somewhat of a flashpoint. Jesus, with crowds of onlookers waiting to see what will happen next, the authorities from Jerusalem who have come down to see him and explain away his power that he is summoning even the chief demons. And now his family has even shown up to bind him up and to whisk him away. Which is a little bit of a paradox. That is, Jesus has become proclaiming people free, free from the demons that overtake their lives, free from the impairments that keep them from the margins of society, freedom from leprosy and a life of exile, free of the powers of sin that are at work and take control over their lives. It is Jesus proclaims freedoms from all that bind. He is met with chains for his efforts. And even if those who gather to bind him can't manage to do it physically, at least not on this day, they seek other ways to constrain him. They hurl insults and accusations. They call him mad and out of his mind. They name him as an agent of Bezabal, of the demons. They seek to put him in his place by announcing that his mother and brother and sisters have come to take him away. They seek to constrain him. And in this moment, as this flashpoint comes, as all of these different things converge with each other, I imagine there's even like a rush or a hush over the crowd as all eyes now turn to Jesus to see how he will respond. Respond to the insults. Respond to his mother. Respond to the chains and physical and metaphorical bindings that they have brought. As all the eyes are now fixed on Jesus, he responds in a way that is still wilder than anything he has yet done. He tells them, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now these words may not seem like the wildest of things, but just think how Jesus is challenging how others want to define him. He will not be bound by their insults, the labels, the characters that they're making of him. He won't even be limited by his past as the confines of blood and lineage are set aside. It is his identity as a child of God that stands. Now these are difficult passages to weed through with all of the detail. But maybe part of uh, what helps us boil down to, to what's important is knowing that we are named as brothers and sisters in Christ. Brothers and sisters of Christ, children of God, we are set free from all that labels us, from all the ways that others seek to constrain us and bind us. 
all the limitations that others impose, the fears that others carry with them, to seek to isolate and exclude what is different from them. The labels, the slurs, the judgments put in their place as the identity as a child of God binds us to the divine and frees us from all things that are less than. But our overcoming these challenges aren't so easy as Jesus seems to make it. Uh, growing up in Albuquerque, I remember that in my school there was the kid named Max. And if you were to look at Max, walk down the street with other groups of, of kids, uh, there's nothing about him that would make him stand out at all. But if he opened his mouth and began to talk, his speech impediment would be impossible to miss. A full sentence couldn't be formed without stumbling over half the words. And if he got excited and tried to rush, it would be even worse. And to make all of this even more obvious, Albuquerque had this practice of busing all the special education kids to the same magnet schools on the short buses. Arriving at school on the short bus was all that was needed to set him apart in a way that he never wanted. And he would get called all kinds of names for it. And while he might at times try to come to his own defense, yelling back cliches like sticks and stones, this only made matters worse, as only half the words came out. Plus, he didn't believe it anyway. He knew that words did hurt, because they were designed to. Many days, Max would have been thrilled if Jesus had shown up and healed him to take away his speech impediment so that he could just fit in. And while Jesus' healing stories sometimes do accomplish removing some of those social stigmas that set people apart, Jesus' motivations are deeper. Bearing witness to a different kind of community where the names and labels that we assign to each other are overcome by God's naming of us. Max would not get the kind of reprieve of Jesus showing up and making everything better. But he would find solace in discovering friends who had struggles of their own, even if different from his. Friends with parents who were divorced. Friends who dressed in clothes that had holes in them because they were worn, not because they were designer. Friends who were made fun of because of their weight, their acne, their glasses, their braces, their smarts, their questioning identities, their skin colors that didn't seem to match most of the other kids in the school. Friends who seemed to be so perfect that they buried so much emotion inside, afraid to show how they really felt. And not all at once, but over time, Max came to understand that those who could be called friends was just about everyone. And the first step was to be labeled and to label others by the identity far greater than their imagination. Seeing himself this way, and others too, as children of God may not seem like the wildest thing to do, but it certainly is the most countercultural to see others as brothers and sisters of the same Christ. Not other, but family. With Jesus, we are only three chapters into this story, but already we see where this is going how his love and his welcome is hope to so many and a threat to some. Hope that will set us free because Jesus has bound himself to us. Bound himself to us through his love. And that sets us free. Amen. In the 
darkness you bring light in our blindness you give sight in our struggles you give life for our debts you pay the price you set us free to love always your love has set us free Set us free, you call us to be. Your love has set us free to be your hands, to change the world, to work for justice and peace. You set us free, your love has set us free. You set us free, your love has set us free. In our thirst, you satisfy. In our loss, our tears, you dry. In our pain, you hear our cry. To the cross, you purify. You set us free to love always. Your love has set us free. of hope, a living faith, gift of peace for every place, gift of love for every race, Jesus is our saving grace, you set us free to love always, your love has set us free. in Christ we are given faith. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have been talking about the fact that in June we would be welcoming an intern to Westside, and so we no longer have to talk about it, but we actually get to welcome our intern. And so today we are excited to welcome Katie Pauly as a pastoral intern here at Westside. It is the part of her um, education and training to be an ordained pastor in the ELCA. And so we are so glad to be a learning place for her. And as she begins, we want to surround her with prayer and welcome uh, prayers of support, recognizing that as she comes here to learn and to do ministry with us, she is a partner um, to proclaim the mission of the gospel, but also that she gets to learn and try and fail and succeed in this place. And so again, uh, we want to surround her with prayers of welcome and support as she begins. And so Katie, as you begin, we do invite you into the mission that we share at Westside to proclaim uh, the gospel in word and deed. And so do you wholeheartedly join us in this mission of proclaiming the gospel as we gather, grow, and go at Westside? If so, answer, I do with the help of God. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. 
we would ask the same of you as the congregation that as she comes here to be in this place that you would offer your support. And so do you, as the people of God at Westside, also promise to support, to bless and encourage Katie in her time here, to celebrate her with, she, with her successes, to join in her sorrow when she falls down, and to give her a hand when she needs to be picked up. If you promise to commit to this partnership and mission of proclaiming the gospel with her as well, please answer in your own space from wherever you are. We welcome you and we ask God to help us as we guide you in faith. We welcome you, and we ask God to help us as you guide us in faith. So, as we welcome her, we also pray for Katie. Let us do so. Gracious God, we give you thanks for providing servants to feed your sheep. As Katie prepares for ministry, bless and keep her in this place. Guide her, sustain her, forgive her, uplift her. Remind her that in all things, she is yours. As she joins us here at Westside, unite us in faith. Make us faithful to your word, and bear fruit through our labor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We welcome Katie to Westside. We're so glad to have you. In addition to Katie, of course, we have other things for which we pray. One of those is our synod. We met in synod assembly this weekend, and so we do pray for our synod and our shared ministry. We pray for our bishop and those elected to synodical positions. We also pray for Peace Lutheran, our mission partner and their gospel uh, proclamation as well. And so we pray for ourselves, for our world, for our life together. We do so in sung and spoken word. God of mercy, God of life, God who sets us free. You do free us from our sin and for life. Free us from those things that block our view of you. Free us from those things that make us think we don't need you. Free us from those things that make us feel like we should hide for you, from you, which we can't do anyway. Free us to live in faith. Lord God, we ask that you free us from despair. Sometimes the news of the world drives us to lack hope. But where hope lacks, we pray that you would enter in. We pray for places where species are disappearing and plants dying. We pray for the places where human beings are suffering in so many ways. You are the author and the giver of life. Renew, transform, make new all of creation, Lord God. We pray for our synod and the ways that we are united with others in faith. Bless and keep Bishop Hegmeyer. Guide her in her leadership. Forgive her when she falls and put the gospel on her lips. Grant wisdom and faithfulness to those who serve on committees and elected positions, that their service would support the proclamation of the gospel in the whole church. And Lord God, we give you thanks for the congregation of Peace Lutheran. They have supported and encouraged us from our beginning. For their gifts of generosity and encouragement and partnership, we give you thanks for these. Bless and keep them in their mission. Guide them in all things and strengthen their proclamation of the gospel. And Lord God, we pray for those who are sick and recovering or especially need to know that your presence is near. We name these before you now. We pray for those who mourn including Harold and Helen Bohr and family as they mourn the death of Harold's sister. Comfort, heal, and make new. Lord God, we pray for all things. You know the things on our hearts. You know the fears that we have. You know the things that we celebrate and the things that we mourn. 
You know the needs of our world, and so we place them all upon you. That we may live freely, trusting that you are God, and we your people, and that all of creation is under your care. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please hear this blessing. I'll sing it to you, and then we'll sing it together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you. are so glad that you could join us for worship today and we hope you feel the welcome of Christ as you gather with us and know that this is a place where you belong. We are glad that you can join us and no matter how often you are with us, uh, you think of yourself as a West Sider whenever that does happen. And we are glad for the gathering that God does with us. A reminder that you can stay connected outside of our time of worship. If you go to wslc.info, there are ways to engage in our ministry, participate in what we have happen, and support our mission. So there are links to sign up. There are links to giving. Do find them there and stay connected to our ministry and mission through that. And as always, follow us on social. We close in song. Guide me, ever great redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore.
Christ, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you soon, Westsiders.